The Pilgrim from Paradise A kindly and charitable, somewhat simple woman, married to a rich miser, once lived in a village where a certain rogue had made up his mind to fool the woman when he could find an opportunity. One day, this man saw the miser ride out to make a tour of his land, and decided that the time to work his trick had arrived. He made his way to the house where the couple lived, and threw himself upon the ground, as if completely exhausted. The good woman came out at once, asking what his trouble was, and where he was from. I am a traveller from paradise, he said, and I have been sent by an ancient couple to seek news of their son and his wife. The lady was very much impressed that she had a visitor from the mysterious, inaccessible Mount Kailasa of the Himalayas, and wondered aloud who these lucky people could be whom her guest represented. The villain gave the names of her husband's parents, whom he knew to be dead, and this, of course, only increased her interest. And how are they? she asked. Are they well? If only my husband were at home to hear your news of his dear old father and mother. She asked him to sit down to rest, and plied him with question after question about the departed ones. She played into the swindler's very hands by asking him whether her parents-in-law had enough to wear and to eat, and if they were really happy. The thief was anxious to be on his way before the miser returned, so he made short work of his answers. Lady, he said, I have no words to describe their miserable state. In the world beyond they have no clothes, no food, only some water to drink. How lucky that you cannot see their sufferings. But why should it be so with them, she asked, when their son has so much, and when I have everything I need? To cut a long story short, she went into the house and brought out a large quantity of clothes and all her own jewels. Clothes and jewels will not help their hunger, said the confidence man, and the trusting woman went back into the house and brought as much of her husband's money as she could find. Collecting up his loot, the villain made off as fast as he could. Not long afterwards the husband returned, and you can imagine his rage when he heard from the excited lady how a messenger from paradise had brought grave news and taken succour to his mother and father. But there was no time to be lost. Choking back his fury, he merely asked her which way the messenger had gone, and he spurred his horse in hot pursuit. Before long the miser saw the thief, and started to gain on him minute by minute. The deceiver, realising that he could not escape, decided to rely on his wits, and climbed up a tall tree with his bundle of booty. As soon as the miser arrived at the bottom of the tree, he called upon the thief to come down. Sorry, said the swindler, I am making my way heavenwards to Kailasa. He climbed to the very top of the towering people tree. The miser settled himself to wait, but then he became impatient and started laboriously to climb up after the thief. Waiting until he had almost reached him, the agile thief threw down all the things he had with him and shinned down the tree faster than the miser could follow. Leaping on the miser's horse, he rode it into the thickest part of the jungle he could find. The miser, of course, was now completely outwitted. Sorrowfully, he made his limping way back to his home. There was his wife, with radiant face, who called out to him in delight, Ah, so you have even handed over your horse to be taken to paradise, so that your dear old father can ride. Unable to admit that he was as much a fool as she had been, the miser could only try to cover his rage and folly by saying, Yes, that's right.